U.S. cable networks have a problem. They utilize the latest technologies to create and distribute content in a $90 billion industry, but still use archaic methods to test that content. Since the days of the first talking pictures, sample audiences have been asked to review content and then to report on whether they liked it or not, with mixed results. Test audiences hated Dorothy singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Batman scored lower than any series pilot in ABC's history. And after screening Seinfeld, network executives were told, quote, no segment of the audience was eager to watch the show again. Jerry, just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. And that is the problem. Studio executives have to question whether they should truly believe the results of test screenings because the results have always been unreliable. This is due to the fundamental flaw in the screening process, asking the human brain to assess what it likes and what it doesn't like. You kids don't know what you want. Claremont graduate university professor, Dr. Paul Zak is a pioneer in the field of neuroeconomics, the study of how brain chemistry affects people's decisions in life. So about 15 years ago, my lab was the first to show that oxytocin, this chemical that the brain makes, increases our sense of connection to other people and even to content like video content. So using paper and pencil or dials to try to get people's feedback consciously when what you really care about is the unconscious emotional responses to entertainment is really asking too much of the brain. It's like asking your liver how it's processing the hamburger you had for lunch. Now we have technology that lets us tap into what's happening in the brain to really understand if the content we're creating is high impact, highly immersive. Dr. Zach's early groundbreaking work with oxytocin was funded by the CIA to test the effectiveness of foreign propaganda campaigns. Working with the US intelligence community, we discovered that they basically use what the entertainment industry uses. So that knowledge gave us the opportunity to build out technologies that just dig right into what the brain's responding to as opposed to liking. Early on, detection of oxytocin levels required a blood sample, but modern breakthroughs in wearable sensor technology have simplified the process. Here is how immersion neuroscience works. When we watch content that is highly immersive, our brains unconsciously release oxytocin and dopamine. Immersion neuroscience's wearable sensors detect the presence of these chemicals by monitoring the pathway from the brain to the peripheral nervous system. Data collected from the armband is transmitted to cloud-based servers, where it is processed using advanced algorithms refined through 15 years of research. The results are sent back to the tester's computer for nearly instantaneous feedback. Yeah, so I mean, how do you feel about it and give me a one to 10 rating? I'm interested to see future episodes and would give it an eight. I would give it an eight. I would love to watch this show. I would give it an eight as well. So now we got your conscious responses while everyone's watching you in this room. So what did your brain say? And the industry is buzzing about Paul Zak and neuroscience technology. Fast Company Magazine said, applications of his technology are endless and a game changer in the advertising world. The Association of National Advertisers found that marketers utilizing neuroscience techniques saw, on average, a 26% increase in revenue. Consumer neuroscience is beginning to invade Hollywood and broadcast television because it's providing insights that you can't get otherwise. Now, the difficulty with this approach is that it has to take place in a lab, it's slow and it's expensive. The solution really is scalable neuroscience, and that hasn't really been a solution until now until immersion neuroscience created a scalable, real-time way to measure people's responses to stimuli. Ease of use, accuracy, and scalability make immersion neuroscience superior to the competition. There certainly are other companies who are using neuroscience techniques in the entertainment industry. Nielsen Neuroscience is one of those. But what does Nielsen do? They have a technology that only lives in the lab, that takes weeks to get results, that's expensive, what we have is scale, real-time, and highly predictive. Immersion neuroscience does not provide marketing research. It provides the hardware and software to allow the end user to create their own marketing research. And while the competition forces you to come to a lab, immersion neuroscience can be used in any location. Immersion neuroscience lets you do the most effective targeting ever, which is 
Not what's your demographic, not what's your psychographic, what's your neurographic? What turns you on individually and give me more of that? In a recent study, immersion neuroscience technology was used on a test audience watching the 2018 Super Bowl commercials. The shocking results confirmed once again that the conscious brain cannot gauge the unconscious reaction to immersive content. When we tested the 2018 Super Bowl commercials, we found that the most immersive ad was an ad for Diet Coke Groove, which is a flavored Diet Coke. On liking by USA Today readers, it was rated around number 16. For us, it was the most immersive. And why? It's a very odd ad. It's not really likable, but it is highly immersive. While the spot was not well liked, it was highly immersive and highly effective. Immediately after the Super Bowl, Diet Coke saw its first quarterly sales gain in eight years. The difference between a popular commercial and an effective one is its immersion. And the same holds true whether you're testing 30-second ads or 30-minute television programs. The ability to monitor video content for its emotional immersion, second by second, is a game changer. So my concern with not racing resources means that executives have this very difficult problem, which is, which series do you greenlight? How do you know it's gonna hit? Well, we use intuition, we guess, we do some focus groups. They're not very effective. We have a solution. Rather than change network executives, why not measure what you're producing better? That's what we're bringing to the table, right? It may be that none of us on Self-Report really know what's gonna hit but the brain knows. So if we can measure brain activity the way we've done it, then you can find out at every stage of that production process, from choosing the shows, to how you program them, to how you advertise them. All those things are informed by looking at how immersed people are in this content. It could be that the executives are doing the best they can with the tools they can. So let's give them better tools.